Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And for anyone new to the channel, as always, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Big welcome to you and to everyone else. Today, we're going to be continuing on with our VGC Series 8 content. As you can see, the team is on your screen in front of you now. It is a bit of a fun one because it is Fun Friday. So I thought we'd go with something a bit different today and concentrate on something of a Pokemon, at least, that's been a bit overlooked in this format that I think has a lot of potential and it might be a lot of fun for you guys to try out and have a bit of a play with. So as always, there will be a poker piece down in the description. So if you want to check out the details, grab it, try it out on Showdown, be my guest. And if you stick around till the end of the episode, we'll throw up the rental code as always. So I hope at the bottom line, everything you enjoy today's episode. And without further ado, friends, let's get into this first one today. So our first opponent today is running a team of Groudon, Porygon 2, Venusaur, Glastria. Grimmsnarl and Charizard. So plenty of things for us to worry about on my opponent's team. They've got that really fast mode with the Venusaur taking advantage of his chlorophyll ability with the sun from the ground on there. Uh, Going to be, you know, difficult to deal with straight off the bounce, but we do have that combination of Drift Blimp, Tapu Lele. Drift Blimp should outspeed the Venusaur in the sun, get the tailwind up and Tapu Lele can start hitting things with whatever it wants. The Trick Room mode on my opponent's team, you can see it present there with the Porygon 2, will support things like the Groudon, potentially, and the Glastria. Um, but again, we do have a good solid Trick Room check on our side of the field in that Dustman and Necrozma. Going to match up well at least against that Glastria, and um, the Groudon is a little bit of a problem, but we do have Porygon 2 to kind of help out with that. The screen support from the Grim Snarl is going to be a little bit awkward to get around, of course, as it always is. Um, and the Charizard there causes us a few issues, of course. But I feel pretty comfortable going with Tapu Lele Drift Blim as a lead. Uh, I think we do want Necrozma in the back, uh, as we say. Um, and maybe, do we want our own Trick Room here? Because it would be useful. Uh, I'm not going to lie. But then also, uh, yeah, I think... I think um, because we might be in a position where we want to reverse the Trick Room as well. If Glastria is on the field. So we'll go with these four to kick us off with today. Um, these Sun teams are always very difficult to kind of approach because they've got so many different modes that your opponent can kind of lead with and you get that kind of presumption wrong or the, you lead against the wrong element of your opponent's team and it's, a, it's an uphill battle straight away. And that's what makes these Sun teams so useful in this format, you know, and so powerful. Well, we are going to see the old Grim Snarl come out with Porygon 2. You would imagine they're probably going to go straight for a, a Trick Room. I would imagine probably light screen Trick Room. Uh, that's what you would imagine. We get our Psychic Terrain up. So, um, I don't know if I want to set the Tailwind up. I don't think it's a very, it's not the most ideal thing to do right now. Uh, but we can burn the Grim Snarl. Uh, and we could go for just a Dazzling Gleam or a Moonblast or a Psychic into the Porygon 2. I'm kind of really more tempted to go for a Dazzling Gleam here just because we can get kind of chip damage onto to, to everything and then, like I say, go for that Will-O-Wisp into the Grim Snarl as well. Um, just if we lock into Psychic, we're kind of pinned to just being able to deal damage to uh, the Porygon 2. You know, it has got Recover. What we want to do is just try and stall out my opponent's uh, Trick Room because they're going to set it up with Porygon 2 and Grimmsnarl on the field, they're not causing too much like offensive pressure, you know? And uh, we'll be able to kind of chip away at them as we see the Trick Room set up. Now, this might be a good time, uh, in all honesty, to um, not take anything down, but switch into our Dust Maiden Necrozma for our Tapu Lele, because you can imagine the Glastria is going to try and probably make an appearance onto the field at some point. Um, we can't really do much else with our Drift Blim. We could burn the, the Porygon too. The residual damage is definitely going to be useful. Um, yeah, let's go for that. I mean, the other option is switching P2 here, and then we've got the option to maybe reverse a Trick Room if my opponent kind of brings in Glastria, which you maybe expect them to do this turn. The other option would be for us, of course, is to go for a Will-O-Wisp here. But I think, like I say, the residual damage onto Porygon 2 is going to be useful. We can always switch Drift Blim out the next turn if we want. So, we'll get our big old Necrozma in. Such a beast. Best best bird in the game. Thunder Wave. Wow. Okay. Okay. Helping us out in this Trick Room. There's the Ice Beam doubling into the, the Drift Blim. Um, 
Okay, well, the paralysis actually helps us out a bunch, especially if we can keep the trick room kind of going like later in this game. Um, the postman is here, so I'm going to have to run and get the door. Isn't it? I don't know what's been going on, but it doesn't look like the turn's happened. The post lady has uh, highly waited for us. We've got packages. I don't know what they are, but anyway, what's going on in this game? Most unprofessional episode of our battle series so far, but I can't miss the post, you know? So, we've got the steel spike off. Thing is, the Grimstone aren't really causing us too many issues at the minute, so I don't really want to be hitting into it. If we can get our defenses boosted up as well, it really helps us out. Um, <sighs> sprinting up and down the stairs, I am fit, I promise, I promise I am. Um, okay, so, let's see. Can we try attack? I probably want to max um, Quake as well into Grimsnarl, uh, and we'll go for... We'll try attack... <clears throat> yeah, we'll try, try attack into that slot. There's a Reflect, okay. Well, the Grimsnarl will go down this turn, but like I say, my opponent's Trick Room turns are kind of running out now, so we've done a good job of stalling these out. I don't know if this will pick up the Knockout. If it does, nope. I'm going to say Recover. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, well. We maybe pulled the trigger a little bit early on our Dusk main, in all honesty. But I'm going to blame the post, post lady for that. The reason I want to try and get special defense boosts as well is because obviously we've got to worry about Venusaur and Charizard coming in in the back. Uh, the defense boost will help us out a bunch, um, of course. And the uh, trick room, we've got one more turn. Okay, and one more turn of am Max, yeah. Ah, right, Groudon, here we go, here we go, lad. Uh, right, well, I mean, we we'll probably have to go hard on Groudon, um, in all honesty. We do have the Psychic Terrain. Oh. Uh, mm, mm, so we could go Max Mindstorm, mm. but probably better go off going for Max Steel Spike, get that defense boost again, and just double tapping into the Groudon here. It may Max, it may Max. But I would imagine we will be slower than it, so we'll get our max steel spike off before it is able to attack. Get the ice beam off as well. Just do a bit of chip into it. I think the worst case scenario here would be if it was weakness policy, but I can't really see it being weakness policy. It maybe is. Who knows? I mean, if it is, we're in a bit of trouble uh, because the ice beam will probably hit before the Groudon attacks. No weakness policy. P2 can just sit there and recover all at once, you know. P2 matched up against Dustman and Crosma, it's not going to be able to, to beat us one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the issue for my opponent is now, if they attack into our Dustman, they're proccing our weakness policy. And we probably do want to get our Trick Room back up um, after this turn. But we'll plus two defense on both of ours. Ooh, Steel Spike coming out, an interesting choice. Not wanting to proc the weakness policy on our, our Dustman, which makes a lot of sense. Because of those defense boosts, Groudon really very whiffy. I wonder what my opponent's got in the back, if it is the Venusaur. So that's the other thing we need to think about as well, if it is potentially the Venusaur, which I'd probably say it is. Uh, well, maybe not, maybe the Charizard. Venusaur's pretty hard to bring against that team, full of psychics, you know? Um, so it's probably Charizard. So we need to try and keep uh, in mind how many like turns of the sun we've got left so when it comes in we're not we're not going to get blown away by those uh solar power attacks now do i protect here and just go trick room the trick room just ended right yes um or do i just attack now i think like we want to try we want to try and uh mitigate as much much attack as possible the problem is if my opponent trick rooms as well that's kind of a dead turn for us but at the same time, a kind of waste in the turn of my opponent's max uh, moves as well, you know? I wonder if they'll just go steel spike again. Yeah, they're just steel spiking. Want to get those defense boosts. Boost. They probably are going for trick room. So we'll just see the trick room, trick room. The most. Oh, no, no, they haven't. Okay. I mean, I was about to say it's the most optimal play for my opponent here because for us, getting the trick room up. Makes life so much easier for us, you know? Um, 
but the Porygon 2's only way to hit us is that uh, is the tri attack, and they've got ice beams, so we know exactly what they're kind of going for. We'll go for a fall on Geyser here. I feel like that probably is with the psychic terrain up on the field. It's still up, right? No, it's not. It's not up on the field. It's not up. Um, we want to recover P2 here anyway. We'll go for a fall on Geyser. Because if they proc our weakness policy, it's probably our most effective attack against the Groudon, in all honesty. Even without the terrain. Like Sunseal Strike, probably. Mm, it's just the defense is so high. Ah, oh, the burn. The burn. The burn. Yeah. Doing a zip. Okay, well, we're going to need to utilize Polygon 2 Tapu Lele in this match to deal with the Groudon. The Groudon we can chip away at, for sure. Ah, oh, the burn from the tri-attack. Not ideal. Oh, all right, well. Here we go. We need our weakness policy. We need our weakness policy. I don't think burn actually affects the, the Photon Geyser output. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I'm pretty sure. It will kind of just stay as it is, um, so it doesn't really affect that side of it. Whereas normally, if you were intimidated, your special attack would kind of get the proc. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. The worry now would be the Groudon going for something like Swords Dance. Um, you two coming out. What are you going to see coming? Polaros. Ooh. Hello, Glastria. Haven't seen you for a while. So the Ice Beam should still do a good... Yeah, I mean, that's that's more than enough for us. Photon guys are coming out. They're probably going to put it in range for an Ice... Mm, no, no, no way. Fire Punch. Ah, come on, sneaky. And the burn. Every time. Every burn. That's not good. That's not good. Uh, with the Trick Room up there, the Glass Rare obviously has access to close combat now. I kind of want to preserve... Um, well, Ghost Stun Suit, mm, uh, the Glastria has blatantly got, the Glastria has 100% got uh, <laughs> the weakness policy, I think, on this team. Two turns of Trick Room left. Not ideal. I mean, one of the plays we could make, predicting that they go close combat, is go into Drift Limb, but it's maybe a turn too soon to do that. Whereas I could, as I don't want P2 to go down to a close combat, that's the, that's the issue. Um, let's go Shun Steel Strike. We're going to proc a weakness policy. And I'm going to sack off. I'm going to sack off Drift Blim here. I think out of everything, like if we could get the burn onto to, uh, Glastria, it would be useful. But I do see close combat coming out. I don't think they're going to go for. Uh, I hope, oh, they have. Ooh, that's not the best idea because now they proc our weakness policy. Unless they're precipicing at the same time. Uh, but the Glastria hasn't got the um, the defense boost. So we're going to be able to do some sizable damage here. Because it kind of just neutralizes the burn that we've taken. So yeah. Even if we proc a weakness policy. Which we don't. Um, we do avoid a precipice blades. Which I don't think really would have done very much anyway. On plus two. Um, hmm. Okay, well, we'll protect. We will, we will, we will. We'll probably go down here. We want to start out this last turn of Trick Room. Um, and, you know, Shadow Ball is probably a better option. Burn's quite nice. Um, yeah, because Drift Blim should underspeed the Groudon. It depends where the, the, the Glass Ray wants to go. It would make sense for it to go into the Drift Blim. Mm, let's just Will O Wisp Groudon. <laughs> And the battle was cancelled. There we go. So we've had post post arrive and we've had the battle cancelled and we've seen Drift Blame do some decent work in that one as well as Dust on Main and Cosmos. So uh, a bit of an odd one for us to kick off with. But at the end of the day, we got the win. We got to show off a little bit of the team uh, working really nicely against probably one of the harder uh, archetypes that we probably you're going to come up against in this format. So very good game to my opponent. And with that, friends, we will jump into our next match of today so next up today we have a team of this looks spicy it's an entire monotype ghost team with their giratina dusclops blacephalon 
Dragapult, Chandelier, and Gengar. Wow, okay. This is cool. I like it a lot. You gotta admit, it's uh, it's very cool to see, isn't it? Uh, straight away, Drift Flame Lele, I think, is our lead. Uh, we've got to bring Porygon too, going to really be very useful against these ghost types. And I think, you know, Incineroar here makes a lot of sense. But at the same time, we want to bring our Restricted uh, Dustman Necrozma. Especially with the Prism Armor and the Weakness Policy, we can definitely do some work against my opponent. Um, yeah, we'll go with the same, same, same four again in this one. And uh, always nice to come across these Monotype teams, you know. I think this season, like, entirety of Sword and Shield is the only time we've done the Battle Series and not actually come across um, a Monotype Eevee team. Uh, it's happened in every other season that we've, we've played in on the channel, um, but we haven't bumped into that token trainer who uses that Monotype Eevee team this season, which is a little bit sad, because uh, it's always it's always a team you think, ah, okay. This is, we should win this, but it's always a lot harder than what you think it's going to be. Always, always. Um, but it always makes for nice content as well, you know, just from the side. And I like doing a little bit, you know, with the content. We do serious teams. This is a serious team, but, you know, it's nice to sometimes look outside the box and do something maybe a little bit more fun, a bit, bit lighter. Look at some Pokemon that get overlooked. It's always nice to be able to do that, especially when considering things like Drifling, which are very good Pokemon in their own right. Um, because you're looking at Blacephalon right now, it is probably going to be uh, Scarfed, you would imagine. The Mind Blown works perfectly here because you Mind Blown, you proc the Flash Fire on the Chandelure and Chandelure just kind of fires back at you. Uh, what we're going to do though is we are going to just Shadow Ball the Blacephalon because that will be enough to take it down and Psychic into the Chandelure. And if the Trick Room goes up, which I doubt it will, my opponent doesn't really have too much that works super well in a Trick Room, um, then we'll see. Bye bye Blacephalon. I do love Blacephalon's uh, design, but so let down by its speed stat when, when we found out about it. Are we just going to get a clean double knockout first? Oh, we are. Okay. We might be doing three matches this one. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But uh, we'll see. Who is the king of the ghosts? Is Drifling the king of the ghosts? King. King or queen of the ghosts? Who is it going to be? My uh, Giratina coming out next. And... Dusclops, the rank master. Okay, well, you get your trick room up. Uh, we will, we will. Giratina is generally more physical, you know? Uh, I'm not really too worried about Dusclops. Should I be? Should I be? Probably. Um, I think what we'll do is Will-O-Wisp, Giratina, and we'll go for that Psychic. I mean, we could max, but I, the, the damage that you get with the specs, Psychic, is just, is just so nice, so... Uh, Giratina could definitely protect here. I don't know if it's the kind of Pokemon that normally carries protect. I don't know. I haven't really seen much of Giratina in this format. It's a bit of a shame because, you know, I always refer back to 2010 uh, Nationals at UK Nats. And Giratina was in both teams and the, and the, and the finals teams. Um, obviously, Reese and Dale both playing Giratina that day and doing really well with it. And it was such a dominant Pokemon at that point in the format, you know. I played Reese in the um, the semi-finals and the Giratina was just so difficult to deal with for something like Kyogre. But now we've got all these fairy types coming into the format uh, and make Giratina's life a lot, lot harder. Um, but there's the Steel Spike coming out. Okay, well, Lele be a, Lele's taking that pretty nicely. It gives us the room to maybe take Lele out and um, bring it back in when the trick room's kind of ended. We've also got P2 we can bring in, make use of that. Uh, 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 uh. We're gonna just, we just, I think, just attack into the Giratina here and we'll go. Um, yeah, we'll bring P2 in. Because we can reverse the trick room if we want. It's probably well, probably more favorable. Another battle cancelled. Come on. People are on the clock today. I swear, you know. Um, <clears throat> well, good game to my opponent. We get to see how dominant uh, Drift Blim is. 
albeit against a Monogos team. And we'll uh, we'll have one more, friends. We'll have one more for Friday. So uh, we'll be back in a moment with our next opponent of the episode. Okay, up next today, and probably our last one of the episode, friends, but it's going to be a fun one because we do have a Rain Zassian team made up of Kingdra, Pelipper, Thunderous, Zassian, Incineroar, and Mimikyu. So we've got, I guess, Mimikyu on here is the kind of counter option for my opponent when they want to stop Trick Room, want to stop Setup posing things want to burn things it's got lots of options like that it's got trick room obviously it's got the taunt it's got the will-o-wisp uh zassian gonna be awkward as always to deal with uh but again you know i feel like drift blim lele could do a really good job here um the only issue would be that kingdra depending on how it's being trained will if it's modest we should get the jump on it if it's modest. I'm just going to check. I'm just going to remind myself. Mm. No, 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 no. No, we won't. Oh, I haven't. Okay. No, we won't. We won't get the jump on it if it's modest, which is a little bit awkward. So maybe we want to go down a trick room route, but then it makes it difficult with the Mimikyu. Uh, we will go. We will go. Tapu Lele. Drift Blim. We'll go Necrozma again, and we will go... Maybe Reggie Aleki here, you know, but P2 makes more sense for the Trick Room setup because Zacian in a Trick Room does not enjoy being in front of a Dustman Necrozma with uh, Max Quake. Um, going to be difficult, going to be difficult, but always difficult, isn't it? I think the Mimikyu throws up more problems for us than anything else because, um, and the Kingdra, you know, um, the Kingdra definitely causes us a few issues. Just with its, it, the, I think it's 137 it hits, uh, modest max speed. Okay, well, we're not seeing as Asian. The thing is, we're not bringing Incineroar either, which makes it a little bit more tricky to deal with that Zassian. But we do have Drift Blim that does allow us, you know, the, the ability to uh, chuck on a, a Will-O-Wisp onto the, onto the Zassian, which is huge for us, you know. Um, that's, the, that's a big, big plus for us, a huge plus. Now, the question is, do we leave Lele in or do we switch Lele out? I think probably switch Lele out, really. Um, <clears throat> P2 makes a lot of sense for us getting a Trick Room up. Orna Crosma could come in, probably tank some. Uh, we, hmm, we don't want to take a Ghost type attack from Mimikyu if that's what they're kind of going for. We've got a Will-O-Wisp, the Zacian. We'll outspeed it with our Unburden Boost. Um, and we'll be able to kind of neuter it that way, which is which is one of the main things why we've got the Willow Wisp on there for Zassian, you know, in particular. We get the special attack download boost, which is always useful. Shadow Sneak coming out into uh, Drift Blim, doing a decent chunk of damage, but not quite enough as we uh, do land the Willow Wisp into the opposing Zassian, and the burn on that is amazing i mean going forward we don't need to worry about it too much as the behemoth blue that comes out into or i would imagine p2 no into uh into drip limb okay well taking us down that's that's fine i mean it kind of frees up a little bit of room now for us to get uh dustman and Crosma onto the field um <clears throat> yeah because it's our only line that we can go down you know um we've got to be careful about like does does Mimikyu burn us or does Mimikyu taunt the P2? I would say probably taunt the P2 first. Um Yeah, I'd imagine you taunt the P2. I think that's that's where you go. I mean, I would like to get the Trick Room up. I just can't see them allowing us to do it. And I don't really want to waste the turn Trick Rooming. They taunt. Benefits of them not taunting us and allowing the Trick Room to go up, though, are, you know, huge. Um, well, I I think we'll forego. We can Trick Room the next turn. We'll go Sun Seal Strike into the Mimikyu. And hope we don't get burnt. Because that's the biggest problem for us. The burn would be more worrying than anything else. Zassian switching out, which is interesting. The thing is, if my opponent trick rooms themselves to reverse the trick room for us, that kind of plays into our own hands. This is why, you know, taunts the way more reliable option uh, to shutting things like trick room down. Um, 
But the big thing is here, we're going to be able to get rid of the disguise. We need to get rid of my opponent's way of shutting down our trick room first. Will always be could have trick roomed. Oh, and the burn coming out, which makes things life very, very difficult for us. Very difficult for us uh, going forward for sure. But we do have access to the trick room the next turn. Which helps us against pretty much everything, you know, because everything in my opponent's team right now that we've seen is is uh, faster than Tapalele, faster than everything we've got on our side of the field. Um, yeah, I think really looking at it from um, this perspective, we should have went Trick Room, you know, uh, because... The, the, the trade-off there would have been better. Like, we get burnt, we get the trick room up. Uh, or we don't get burnt, and we get denied the trick room, but Necrozma's still in a good position. Um, Alright, well. We need to try and trick room this turn. And this is where they're going to taunt us, for sure. Uh, okay, we'll go Max Quake into... It's going to be more useful. I think... Probably getting damage onto the Kingdra because I could imagine the Kingdra max in here, maybe. Okay. The Kingdra popping out. And Incineroar coming in. Well, the Max Quake will help there. The Intimidate definitely doesn't help us. Puts us down to really technically minus three with the burn there. Um, but. Okay, and another Will O Wisp coming out. Nowhere to stop this Trick Room now. We're not going to do. An incredible amount of damage into the incineral here and we're kind of my opponent's doing all the right things to stall out uh our trick room turns i mean it's not bad damage it's not bad damage but it's not it's not amazing is it i just work we're gonna have to steal spike the next turn i think um into the mimikyu to get rid of it just to get another defense boost which definitely helps us out a bunch of course uh, but you've got to think, probably my opponent's main line that they're going to run with is going to be the Kingdra, going to be maxing that Kingdra, because nothing... I mean, the Incineral could could max, for sure. Not out of the realms of possibility. Um, it's probably the better option, in all, like especially in the Trick Room environment, when you like think about the, the match overall. But is Incineral going to be able to... I don't know, because you have to kind of... You're going to proc the weakness policy on the Necrozma. It's kind of waiting for these max turns to be done. And at the same time, we've got plus two defense after this steel spike. I'd imagine the Mimikyu may switch out here. No? No switch out. Okay, well. Get a good chunk. I mean, that the, the, plus, two uh, the plus one special attack on Porygon 2 is helping us out to no end in this match, you know. Uh, that amount of damage is, is really, really good. Really useful. Darkest Lariat coming out. Yeah. No worries about that. And the Steel Spike, like I say, we are minus three, but it still should be enough to get the Mimikyu at this point. Um, that's our max turns done. And what comes in now? Zacian. Zacian. Potentially Zacian. where I kind of really would prefer maybe Thunderbolt on Porygon 2, you know, just so we've got a better way to hit Zacian, because obviously the Ice Beam, the Tri-Attack are resisted attacks onto it. But with a plus one, okay. Kingdra coming in. Now, Photon Geyser might be the better option for us to go with here, in all honesty. Um, could potentially double up into the, uh, the, inc the Incineroar as well, you know. Get rid of that. But it's probably better to protect, re just recover and Photon Geyser into the Kingdra. While the Psychic Terrain is still up on the field as well. We need to kind of keep... Oh, okay. Kingdra going to protect. Go on, Incineroar. Attack into uh, Duskmane. Please. Please go for Duskmane. Ooh, party shot. Not what we want to see. Not what we like to see. We should have doubled into the uh, Incineroar there. It's difficult though with the Earthquake, you know, because you, you're potentially just hitting your hitting your own your own Pokemon, which is not always ideal. Uh, but Zassian going to make its way back onto the field. 
I'm getting that to plus one, which puts it to minus one. Technically, with the um, might be uh, is it better to switch out Crosma? We can't really switch out the Crosma in the face of a, a Zassian, though, can we? How many turns of trickery have we got left? That's the big question, you know. Two. I kind of don't want to switch P2 out either, you know. I think we just try attack into... The Photon guys are going to come in there. I think what my opponent probably will do is switch... Switch the Kingdra out to Incineroar and maybe protect the Zacian. Um I think we can probably get away with going for an Earthquake this turn. Because if the Incineroar does come in... Okay. Incineroar going on that side. Minus, I don't know, minus 99, I think, attack on uh, Necrozma, which is so, so weak at the minute. Um, try attack's going to do, mm, okay, Kingdra getting itself all prepped for maxing for when these Trick Room turns end. Going to set the rain up now, I would imagine, um, and maybe protect on this. Uh, do you need to protect on the next turn? Probably not, probably not. The Mimikyu, again, like, we, I identified it in Team Preview. It was the one thing that was causing us lots of issues from the start, you know. Try attack doing decent enough damage. The Earthquake going to do a bit of chip to... Well, it, it didn't look like it did anything to that Kingdra. The Max guys are going to come out. This will be into Necrozma. Plus one defense will help us out. Oh, into P2. Okay, well. Now, the Psychic Terrain does end. <clears throat> it's probably worth... Um, hmm. Psychic terrain ends. They can fake us out. Kind of want to recover and get Tapu Lele onto the field. Hmm. But doing that is not... I mean, yeah, I think we've got to do it. I, we've got to reset the drops on the Necrozma. Um... Because I can see the Incineroar going fake out now into the P2 and then the Kingdra kind of doubling up into that slot. Doesn't put us in any better of a position the next turn. Um, but it does split my opponent's kind of decision making. Do they go... Um, do they go after the Tapu Lele or do they go after the Porygon 2 again, you know? Uh, because if they go after... P2 to stop the trick room. Then they lose Kingdra, pretty much. Ooh, they go after Lele. Hmm. Uh, not so ideal. Not so ideal. Okay, well, P2, Necrozma versus the world. Can we get our trick room up? That is the question. I think we can. I think P2's... It's got the defensive bulk behind it to uh, take... I think a double up from my opponent. I don't want to risk Necrozma getting max guys here. There's no, there's no reason not to protect in this situation. Um, where are you going, Kingdra? Where are you going? B two, got to be. No, Necrozma. Unless the Incineroar's got taunt, and that would be, that would be pretty terrible. Now it's got the Darkest Lariat doubling up into that slot and then get a free Trick Room up, which is perfect. Okay, well. <clears throat> Kingdra finished its max turns. Yes, okay, that's what we need to see. That's what we need to see because a try attack and an Earthquake will be enough to get it. But you've got to imagine that... Um, hmm... Do you protect the Kingdra here and go for a parting shot? I think you, you potentially try it. I think we go Earthquake and uh, try attack into the Incineroar. Yeah, and don't get caught out like we did uh, previously in this game where my, my opponent definitely was was gunning for that play, you know? And we... Ah, oh, we don't get it. Don't get it! Parting shot again. So they're going to get another Intimidate onto us, which is not ideal. It's turned out to be a long episode today, hasn't it? You know, we've had quite a few games. 
I'll make sure to try and cut this down a little bit. But um, it's always difficult, these kind of like... I mean, P2s are kind of a way through here. Let's see how much this earthquake does. I don't expect this to do anywhere near enough damage. No. But can I try attack? <clears throat> and a Sun Steel Strike, I think, into the... We can't really afford to. I think we've got to go try attack into Kingdra and... Yeah, Photon Geyser, because if if Incineroar comes in on that slot, the tri attack will take it down. Okay, that's fine. And this combination here should be enough, should be enough to get the Kingdra. Yes, the Photon Geyser will be 100% enough. And now the Incineroar comes in, it cannot fake out, it goes down to P2, weaken Earthquake. The rain does stop, but the Incineroar is not really the issue anymore, you know. It's going to be very close, I think. Because, you know, the Sacred Sword's still going to do a good chunk of damage. The burns are 100% helping against that Zacian. Right, Incineroar coming in. Yeah, you're, you're gone. You're gone, Incineroar. You're done. You're done. P2 has got your number. Um, it's it's whether or not we go for yeah sun seal strike I think is probably the better option. Um, try attack into NC and we'll go sun steel strike into the Zassi and we don't want it. like the earthquake's not really doing anything. The stab steel it's going to be better into Zassi in, in general. Um, so yeah, there's a try attack enough. P2 has just pulled us through this game like to no end. It's just so good, like paired with Dustman across me, you get those boosts under its belt, you know. But we can't ignore the, the contribution that Driftblim did in this match. The burn to the Zacian is, is so huge for us, you know. Oh my god, it does nothing. It does nothing. I don't know if we'll be able to out damage it, to be honest. Behemoth Blade, let's see what we're doing, what we're dealing with. <sighs> doing too much, too much, too much. Um, okay. How many turns of Trick Room got left? Like I said, it was going to be close. I didn't think it was going to be this close. It's going to be very close. Uh, the Psychic Terrain disappears now. How many turns of Trick Room we've got left? Let's see. One. Okay. Well, we probably need to recover this turn. Mm. Yes, recover this turn because we can't... We can't deal with having double up damage. Uh, we'll go for the Sun Seal Strike again. Just get that little bit of extra chip on. Hope they go after the Dustman Necrozma here. They may go after P2. Uh, but we'll be able to gauge if they do what the damage output is going to be like onto P2. You know, we have got the defense boost as well. Um, Dustman Necrozma, Sonda Wellman. Its biggest drawback is obviously being really susceptible to getting intimidated, you know. Um, in close combat. <laughs> okay, well, we'll take that all day long. Happy with that, because now we just protect Trick Room, and then that is that is the game, and P2 is not worried in the slightest about taking uh, another close combat from this Zacian. One little bit, you know. Um, uh, Trick Room, like I say, and protect, and that should wrap it up. We may see the, 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 uh, the old battle cancelled again. There we go. Three strikes and you're out. Very good game to my opponent. That was a hard one, but it's nice to be able to get the win there, eke it out in the end, uh, because it was like, it was tricky. It was tricky. Like I said, the Mimikyu was difficult to deal with, and uh, hopefully that made for a nice end to the episode today. Like I say, a little bit longer than usual, but uh, always worth it, and uh, as long as you're enjoying it, that is the main thing. So we'll hop over now and get you all the rental team for today's team. Okay, friends, here is today's rental team. I hope you enjoy it if you try it out. If you do try it out on the ladder, definitely let me know down in the comments section how you've got on with it i think it's a really good build in general not to blow my own trumpet but at the same time i just mean that it's a lot of fun to play with and it has potential to really do some good work in the current format and playing a few things that aren't really commonly used like dustman across is used but not super commonly drift limb 
I really haven't seen at all, but it has such a good ability to disrupt and dismantle teams in this format and do really good work. So if you do try it out, like I say, hope you enjoy it, friends, and um, we'll wrap the episode up there. Have a great weekend, whatever you're up to. Good luck if you're playing Players Cup 3. I am casting, uh, so it is going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully I get to cast some of your games. If you are playing this weekend, though, like I say, good luck. Hope you have a great tournament, and uh, I'll catch you all on Monday, potentially for another episode on the channel. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves, and bye-bye.